men's Easter breakfast. The scouts through Doug and the other scout leader will be assisting. That'll be taking place at 9.30 a.m. on Sunday morning. If you could attend, that'd be awesome. The second one is there's an important congregational meeting that's going to be held on Tuesday, April 2nd at 6.30 down in the Fellowship Hall. And again, that's a congregational meeting Tuesday, April 2nd down in Fellowship Hall beginning at 6.30 p.m. If you can attend, that would be great. Please bring uh, anyone that you can uh, that are members of the church. It's going to be an important session to provide an update to the members regarding the transition of Pastor Tim Monroe. Another announcement, movie night is being uh, sponsored by our session and deacons um, on Saturday, April 13th at 7 p.m. We're going to be showing the Noah uh, production from Sight and Sound Theater out in Lancaster. Um, certainly an, a great opportunity to bring young people to our church and adults as well. And again, that'll be at 7 p.m. on Saturday, April 13th. And then one other important announcement. This Friday, March 29th, we'll be doing Stations of the Cross here in the community. Uh, Gene Artman's been working with the ministerium and other churches in our area. Um, they'll be doing 14 locations across the community. They'll be getting, uh, begin at 9 a.m. And again, that's this Friday, uh, March 29th. Thank you, Gene. So uh, just to reiterate Gene's comments, you can participate for the entire March. If you're limited somewhat or you're not able to make the entire March, please join for whatever you can. And again, that'll begin on uh, Friday, 9 a.m., um, and again, Gene's been a big help working with the other community churches. I'd like to welcome back Donna Yarnell uh, to our pulpit this morning. She's here with her husband, Dave. Um, they're members at Shalakta Church. Donna, thanks, thanks for joining us. Now, um, to begin our worship, let the Lord be with you. Um, just a, a couple of sharing of joys and concerns. Um, we'd like to ask for prayer for Jeff Lewis. He continues to have some serious health concerns. Uh, we'd like to raise him up in prayer uh, this morning. And I, I'd also like to raise up my mother, Doris Falk, in prayer. Um, she's been having some pretty serious health concerns um, and uh, mobility issues. So those are two prayer concerns that I wanted to bring forward. Are there any other praises or uh, prayer concerns from the congregation? Kim? Thank, th thanks. Your sister, Cheryl. Thank you, Kim. Uh, other prayer concerns? Yes, Diane. There's a little boy by the name of Dakota. I don't know his last name, but they're on a prayer group that I belong to. Okay. Um, he is very, very ill, um, and the Lord has been intervening, but they're going to take him off of the ECMO machine today and try to get his lungs and heart working on their own. So if you could just keep him in prayer. And Dakota's from the community area <laughs> he's, here? He's from um, where my my parents work what town just rough like okay thank you so prayer concern from diana a young fella named dakota he's been having some serious health concerns with breathing on his own and also his heartbeat they're trying to take him off the uh, uh equipment this week so if we can keep him in our prayers he's from the town of mcconnellsburg out east other prayer concerns from the congregation okay let us prepare our hearts to worship god
please join me in the call to worship. Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. He comes with joy and hope. Hosanna. Hosanna. Glory to God in the highest heaven. Amen. Please stand and join in the first hymn, number 267. Hosanna, loud Hosanna. Please join me now in the prayer of confession. Lord, we confess that when we started this journey, it seemed like a fun idea. Walk the road with Jesus, we thought. But the journey's had so difficult at times. Our spirits have been challenged and tried. We have come to the time of entrance into the holy city. We want everything to be wonderful for you to conquer all those things that threaten us and our peace. We want you to do what is we direct. Forgive us, Lord, when we place our fears and ignorance before your love. Help us to look again at the many ways in which we can be a blessing to others who are serving them and you. Release us from our panic and mistrust and help us to place our lives solely in your hands. Amen. The one who rode into Jerusalem to cheering crowds knew that the cross awaited. In this way, we might know that great love of God for us. Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, has defeated sin forever. Hear and believe this good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven.
Our Old Testament lesson this morning is Psalm 150. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. This is the word of God. Good morning. It's good to be worshiping with you all again this morning. Uh, could we pray before we hear scripture? Holy God, in the midst of the loud hosannas, at the waving of the palm branches rustle in unison, quiet our preconceived notions and hush our sure grasp of your truth so that we may perhaps discover something about your vision, your hope, your purpose for our life that changes the way we think, act, and do. Amen. Our second scripture is from the book of Luke, chapter 19. 19. This recalls the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. May the word of God speak to each of us. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples saying, go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? 
Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, the owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. As he came near and saw the city, he wept over it. The word of God for the people of God. Little Johnny was sick one Palm Sunday, and he stayed home with his mother. When his dad came home from church, Johnny said, Dad, why are you carrying those palm branches? His dad said, well, you see, son, this is Palm Sunday. Jesus came into town. Johnny said, wouldn't you know it, just my luck. The one Sunday that I don't make it to church and Jesus shows up. <laughs> we can expect Jesus to show up here, too, this morning. It is good to gather to celebrate this day once more, this day that we call Palm Sunday. As we prepare for Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday, I would like to look at what was really happening, as well as not happening in these six days that we call Holy Week. I would like to look at our reason for hope. The Easter season is a time calling for praise, rejoicing, and hope. At this time of the year, all nature sings and shouts and waves its praise to the Creator in the boldest, brightest colors you can find. Yellows, pinks, and greens are all around us. Pastels calling in spring. Of course, we as Christians have special reason to rejoice at Easter. But on that first Palm Sunday, we find there are a group of people who are not rejoicing, who are not celebrating the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. What we find are Jewish leaders who were angry with all the followers and notoriety that Jesus had been receiving, and they decided to put Jesus to death. They all knew that just a few days before the events of this day, Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. It was official. In their minds, Jesus had to die. Our scripture this morning finds us attending a large parade. Many scholars believe that Jesus planned this day, that he planned his own parade. We know he had studiously, up until this moment, avoided public acclaim and publicity. Now he reached out for it. It was Passover time. The city was jammed with pilgrims from all over the world. Jesus entered Jerusalem in a way that would focus the whole city on his arrival. The day that we refer to as Palm Sunday started fairly normal around, Beth, around Bethphage and Bethany, about two miles from Jerusalem. As we heard, Jesus sent two disciples to get the colt that he would ride in this triumphal entry a cult that Jesus knew would be there, that he had planned to be there when he sent the disciples. In just four days at a Monday Thursday service, we may hear of Jesus sending his disciples again to town to look for a man carrying a jug. This mysterious man with a jug had a role in Holy Week, just as the man with the donkey. Jesus is very much in control of Holy Week and plans it meticulously. Jesus knows that he is riding to the completion of his purpose 
here on earth. In just a few days, his work will be finished. He will soon be crucified. His disciples pleaded with him not to return to the city. But Jesus knew he must go. It was love that guided him. It was love for you and me that drove him. His followers understood what was happening, or thought they did. For we see in the Old Testament, in Zechariah 9, 9, it reads, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the offspring of a donkey. His teachings and his healings had prompted many to believe that he's going to ride into Jerusalem as the long-awaited Messiah. Now they see him. They are excited. The conqueror is coming. The fulfillment of prophecy is here. They cut down palm branches and laid them in the road to make a royal path for the king. They throw down their coats, most likely the only coats they owned, how often do we see this kind of demonstration of praise? I would say not often. Not often outside the boundaries of the church. How often when, during the week when we are seen at the Blairsville Walmart or the grocery store or walking downtown, are we gloomy, distracted, self-focused instead of Christ-focused. We do not praise God as often as we should, both within and outside the walls of our church. Notice the words in verse 37, it reads, the whole crowd, all of them were shouting praises, all began to shout and sing. God's word says that we are to praise him Praise him for what he has done for us, for what he is going to do for us. Praise him because we are not getting what we deserve. God does not require us all to be beautiful singers or eloquent, eloquent preachers, but he does expect us all to make a joyful noise in praise. Don't you wonder how someone who has been forgiven redeemed and saved can sit on their hands and not shout out with praise. Jesus and those who have chosen to join him are coming down the side of the Mount of Olives, coming into town on one of the busiest days, on one of the busiest rows of the year. Thousands are there. It is the kind of time and place where we would not expect to hear the praise of God. It would be like going to a Super Bowl, not expecting to hear God praised. It would be like going to a Fourth of July parade and not expecting to hear God praised. But these followers of Jesus were giving unanimous praise from the multitudes. This is what set them apart from the crowd, from the unbelieving world. The Pharisees of the crowd were not joining in. They were angry, ticked off, trying to find something to criticize. God doesn't expect the Pharisees, the unbelievers, to break out with praise. He wants them to. He wishes they would. But he does expect his children to do so. And on this day they did. They shouted, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. It was glorious. It was joyful praise. Excited praise. Praises of gratitude. Praise of antip anticipation. While the Jewish leaders were planning Jesus' death, his followers were celebrating and praising. They were shouting praises with all their might. We gather each week as we are now to worship and praise Jesus. Praise is common in our churches today. Praise was common in the temple at Jesus' time. 
But this praise was different. This praise was not confined to the inside of the walls of a church. It was not inside the courts of the temple. This praise, these shouts, these hosannas, hallelujahs, and amens were outside the temple, outside the church. These shouts were out on the road, out in the city. These praises were not bound by walls or rituals. This is real praise, bona fide praise, not just Sunday morning for one hour praise. I know we all have times, I know when I, I have, when we have said, I have nothing to be joyful about. We know there are times when each of us have sad hearts. Those lives that are filled with tension, fear, anger, defeat. And we wonder if others have been through what we are facing. But as Christians, our praise should not be dependent on our circumstances, but should be focused on the saving grace we have experienced in Christ through his very blood, through his love. Focus on the hope we have received. Praise of thanks, praise of expectations to come. That our praise, like that of Jesus' followers on that day on the road to Jerusalem, have roots deeper than what is happening in the moment. Our praise needs to be part of our very being, our daily lives. Praise with a purpose. Psalm 19, one to two reads, the heavens declare the glory of God the skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour, pour forth speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. It is hard to understand how anyone can look at a newborn baby and not praise God, not see his existence, or stand on the rim of the Grand Canyon, or look upon the Rocky Mountains and not see God. I had the opportunity a few years back to see the Grand Canyon. I was in awe. The first thing I thought was, is there anyone who can look at this and not believe there is a God? The many colors, the dancing shadows, the depth and the width was something to behold. All of God's cre creation sings praise. We need to do as Nehemiah commands in 9.5. Stand up and praise your God who is from everlasting to everlasting. Blessed be your glorious name and may be it be exalted above all blessing and praise. You alone are the Lord. You made the heavens, even the highest heavens, and all their starry host, the earth and all that is on it, the seas and all that is in them. You give life to everything and the multitudes of heaven worship you. Reverend Randy Edwards would say, quote, even though my life is caving in around me and it feels as if the wolves are trying to eat me, even though I come to church exhausted from slogging my way through the mud holes of the world, through temptation and sin, my heart is still lifted up because in spite of all, Excuse me, I am loved. Our voices should be lifted up by the very thought of God's eternal love for us in Christ, by the hope we have in Jesus. We should be praising God, not for our troubles, but in spite of our troubles. After all, if these followers in our text had been pulled away from the shouting multitudes and questioned, they would have surely said that on the surface of their lives, there was little reason to praise God, little reason to throw their only jackets on the ground for the donkey to walk on. There was still the Roman occupation. Many were still living in poverty. There were still taxes and Pharisees and sickness and tragedies as fall upon us all. But still they praised for what they had seen and heard and experienced.
The unbelievers in the crowd, the spiritually blind, said to Jesus, Make your believers be quiet. Tell them to stop. Perhaps they were worried about the rebellion it would cause. But Jesus showed that praise was necessary. If they keep quiet, the stones will cry out, Jesus said. Why is there not more praise in the hearts of people? Why do we save our praise for one hour on Sunday mornings? Why do we save it for Christmas and Easter? Jesus says the very rocks will cry out if we don't. So why are we often silent? Author Ann Weems writes, quote, we're good at planning. Give us a task force and a project and we're off and running, no trouble at all. Going to the, Philly, going to the village and finding the colt even negotiating with the owners is right down our alley. Oh, and how we love a parade. In a frenzy of celebration, we gladly focus on Jesus and generously throw down our coats and palms in his path. And we can shout praise loudly enough to make a Pharisee complain. It's all so good, the parade. It's in between parades that we don't do so well. We don't do so well from Sunday to Sunday. For we forget our hosannas between parades. The stones will have to shout because we won't." End quote. So we come to the end of our scripture in Luke. If God's people will not praise him, the stones will, the earth will, the trees will. Why? Because praise is necessary. Praise in the midst of sorrow. In verse 41, as he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it. Why did Jesus weep? He wept because even in their praise, they did not get it. He wept because he knew that in just five days, the same fickle voices that cried hosannas would crucify him. They did not fully understand. The people had made him in their minds a conquering hero, a knight in shining armor. They see him boldly ride into Jerusalem in the fulfillment of prophecy they think he's about to charge in and destroy the Romans, set the people free from oppression. Jesus wept while the crowds cheered. He wept while they shouted praises. Jerusalem was gleaming in the sun on that day from, a gold, from the gold on the temple, the jeweled foundation, no expense pair, spared. But Jesus weeps. Jesus weeps as he sees the multitudes that are blind, spiritually blind, to the fact that the Savior is here. He looked within the hearts of the people and he saw their spiritual ignorance and blindness. They should have seen who Jesus was. The prophets and John the Baptist had prepared the way. Here is God in their midst, in the flesh, and still they will reject him. He weeps over lost souls, defeated lives, people in the bondage of sin with no hope. We as believers, we who know how the story ends, we who know of the love and salvation that Jesus offers need to be leading the praise, leading the lost to the object of our praise. We are to praise God because of who God is, what he has done. If we want to see a difference in our relationship with Christ and in our walk with him, 
We should start to enjoy the benefits and tell others the benefits of praising God today. Continue that praise, even when we feel prone to give up. Commit yourself to a life of praise and fellowship with Jesus and experience the full newness of God. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory and power to our God. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Donna, thank you for that powerful message this morning. Please stand and join in the affirmation of faith. We believe in the God who is the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud. We trust in our holy parent who judges and shows mercy. We hope in our creator who is faithful to all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the Jesus who rode into Jerusalem. We trust in the Messiah who was crucified, died, and was buried. We hope in the living Christ who walked out of the tomb. We believe in the Holy Spirit, giver of faith and formation. We trust in the breath of life, stirs, sustains, sanctifies. We hope in our advocate who brings us and through us the gift of God's peace. Please continue standing and join in hymn 268, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. love a parade. We love to wave at those passing by. Oh, what a joy. And yet we know all too well that parades can become mobs, that cries of Hosanna can turn into shouts of crucify. Oh, Lord, we need you. Here are prayers for those who cannot lift their voice because life or health has worn them down. Here are prayers for those who spoil the joy with their own agenda. 
Hear our prayers for those who feel a burden of expectations they cannot meet. Hear our prayers for those who just need a little peace and quiet. Hear our prayers for those who wonder why everyone else has not yet joined the March for Justice. Hear our prayers for those who have heard, not yet, wait a little longer. Hear our prayers for those who cannot face the cross. Hear our prayers for those who desperately need an empty tomb on Easter morning. Hear our prayers for us and all the things we carry. Give us strength and courage, faith and hope to follow Jesus this holy week. As we dine at the tables, as we pray, as we walk, and even as we flee, remind us of your love that never fails. O Lord, we need you until that day when we might know that joy. As we wait with the confidence of children of God, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Consider what you carry in your hands today. Do you carry the rein of a donkey, a cloak to share, a branch to wave? What do you bring to welcome the Lord today? Whether you share your gifts today in service, online, through the mail, trust that the Lord needs you. Let us stand as we bring forward our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings. As the crowds cried, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, we are truly grateful for the greatest gift of all, Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Receive these gifts as a symbol of the dedication of our very selves to you, O oh God. Please use these gifts and use us as a part of the inbreaking of your kingdom, which comes and is still coming into our world today. Amen. Please remain standing as we close with our hymn 265, All Glory, Laud, and Honor.
As we enter this holy week, may we have the courage and the faith to wait and to walk, to listen and to pray, to plan and to be surprised by the plan that the Lord that leads to life. And as we go to invite others to join us in the most sacred way, may the love of God, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit draw near to us and carry us this day and each day to come. Amen. Thank you.